you are going for the Eagles tonight. My, my boys and Will, basically. <laughs> Kidding. Okay. And I guess everybody else is going for the Chiefs? No. No? Okay. How many of you just want to be a good game? Okay. How many of you are just there for the commercials? Uh, we're actually going to try, barring the technological uh, problems, we're going to try to display the Super Bowl in here tonight. And uh, we, we joke that we're going to have the Eagles fans sit on one side of the aisle and Chiefs fans on the other side, if they're just here for the commercials, we'll make you sit in the back and so be can and, uh, you know, kind of stay back there, so. Um, but, let me ask this question. How, how good are you at being led? Or are you somebody who maybe would describe yourself as a control freak? Now, I know that question of how are you at being led? That's not a very popular question. It's not a popular idea uh, in our world. We like to be in control. We don't like people to tell us what to do. We don't like people to tell us where to go. We like to be in charge of our own lives. And so I would reckon to guess, and I could be wrong, but I would think that most of us would have a hard time with being led. And yet, when it comes to Scripture, when it comes to our relationship with God, that's exactly what we're supposed to do, right? We are supposed to be led by Him. We just sang this song, and we're going to look at the, the psalm that inspired that. This is probably one of the most famous Scriptures in all of the Bible. Maybe you can quote it. Maybe you know it by memory. We're going to look at Psalm 23. And so if you want to turn over there, we're going to be in Psalm 23. It's a short psalm. It's only six verses. You probably heard it at a funeral, uh, you've maybe seen it on TV or movies, this is just a very common thing, even people who don't go to church sometimes can recite parts of this song, very, very uh, popular song. Now, I know that you probably grew up hearing it a certain way, and there's a certain cadence or rhythm to Psalm 23, where if you say the first couple lines, you can probably say the next couple of lines, and you can quote it, and you can just kind of, there's a certain kind of, you know, rhythm to Psalm 23 as you're saying it. And because of that, sometimes we just get so familiar with it that we kind of gloss over or don't really spend a lot of time looking at what it's actually saying. So I'm intentionally going to be reading this from a passage, from a translation that we don't normally read from, so that we do have to stop and think just a little bit about what the words are saying and not just simply rolling through it like we're reciting a poem. So we're going to look at Psalm 23, starting there in verse 1, looking at this famous song. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. We've been going through talking about, we started last week this series looking at suffering and the idea of suffering and the trials and the things that we have to sometimes go through in life. And so we're going to look at that through the lens of this psalm and also this idea of the things that we go through. We typically think of our lives as peaks and valleys, ups and downs. And so I want to talk about this valley aspect and how it relates especially to shepherds and sheep. And so when we talk about suffering, when we talk about Jesus being our shepherd, when we talk about valleys, I want us to kind of center our thoughts around this main idea this morning, which is we can make it through the valleys if we will trust and follow the shepherd. It's not a question of if you're going to have these things happen, it's just a matter of when. You're going to have those down moments, you're going to have those depressing moments, you're going to have those negative moments and those, those times of suffering and trial and tribulation. How are you going to get through those valleys, those low points in your life? 
Well, we do it by following Jesus, by clinging closely to him and allowing him to lead us through those valleys. So if you go back and look at some of the language in this psalm, in Psalm 23, there's a lot of promises, a lot of good things that are mentioned in this passage and talks about the role of the shepherd. I know anytime we talk about sheep and shepherd, obviously it's a very common thing in the Bible, it's a common analogy that's used. But we understand sheep have a certain kind of behavior to them, and the shepherd also, he has his part, he has his role. And when we talk about sheep, we typically say sheep are what? They're dumb. Right? That's how we think about sheep. We say they're dumb. And then we go, well, I don't know if the analogy really carries over because I'm not a dumb person. And we think, well, you know, God can have a mind and I'm, you know, I use my mind. We don't like to think of ourselves as dumb necessarily, but in the same way that maybe sheep don't always know where they're going, maybe we can understand that we're like that too. Maybe we're not dumb, but maybe we, we think we know the way sometimes. We think we know the best, best path to take. And sometimes it's, we're dead wrong. That God is always going to know more than us. His ways and His thoughts are always going to be higher than ours. And so it's good for us to realize, you know what, I don't, I don't have to have all the answers. I don't, I'm the one to mess up, and I'm not going to go the right path. But I do follow the one who does. And that's important. Because as sheep, they have to understand, they have to have this trust in the shepherd. If they don't trust the shepherd, they'll just go wherever they want. They'll be all over the place. So there's a trust involved in the behavior of sheep. Now we look at the, sh the shepherd's role. Obviously, there's a lot of things that the shepherd does for the sheep. If the sheep are dumb and the sheep aren't really sure where they're going, well, then obviously the shepherd has to guide them. That's one of the main things that the shepherd does. He's going to guide them. We see this in the text about the rod and the staff. That there's sometimes discipline involved, right? We, we want to keep them from harm's way. We bring them back from a cliff. We pull them back. So there's, there's guidance there. There's protection. There's also provision because you have to lead sheep to the food and the water. They may not know how to find it themselves. So there's provision involved. There's also comfort and care. And so these are all the things that it's mentioned in Psalm 23. It's just six verses. And you see this list of here's all the things that David is using this analogy of the shepherd and sheep. He's talking about God and talking about Jesus. That this is what the shepherd does. He provides all of these things for us. Now, we know, as I said, this is not just in Psalm 23. This is an analogy that's used throughout Scripture. And so when we go to the New Testament, we see the sheep and shepherd analogy playing out, and we realize, okay, in this sense, Jesus is the shepherd. So in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus sees the crowds. He has compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And so we see this analogy being used, that Jesus is the shepherd, that the people are lost, they're confused, they don't know the way. Obviously, Jesus does. He is the shepherd. Then we go into places like John's Gospel. And we, you remember that in John's Gospel, he has these seven I am statements, where he says, I am this, I am that. And one of those is found in John chapter 10. He says, I am the gate for the sheep. And I'll quickly just point out, and you'll see it here in a picture in a little bit, that a lot of times the, the way that you would fence sheep in is you build walls of rocks. And there would be sometimes an archway. And the shepherd would literally just sit there in the archway and cover the door. That was the door to the, the pen, so to speak. And so when Jesus says, I'm the gate to the sheep, he's saying, I watch and protect the entrance, the goings out and the coming in of the sheep. And so he says, I'm the gate of the sheep. But then later on in that chapter, he will actually say, not only am I the gate for the sheep, I am the shepherd. And so he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices or lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me just as my father knows me and I know the father. And so I sacrifice or give up my life for the sheep. Later on in that passage, he'll say, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So we understand this analogy. We understand what the biblical writers usually are using this for. That we're trying to get this understanding that we need God's guidance. We need God's protection, provision, and care. That we sometimes just kind of go all over the place and we need to be centered around God. That He is the one who cares for us and leads us. That He is our shepherd. And we understand that analogy. Now there's something about the valleys that I want to talk about specifically because when we think about this region where David is writing this, and you think about the Bible times and where Jesus lived and where these guys lived in the Bible, there are some places that do have some you know, lush 
spot. We read that in the psalm that he leads me to these green meadows. There are some green meadows. There are some places like that. But most of the geography in that area is a little bit different. It's, it's not quite as lush as maybe what we might think of. And so here's an example I mentioned of the kind of the pen and, and the gate, the shepherd being the gate there. This is what Jesus says in John 10. So this is the kind of the environment that you're thinking about. It's not lush and green like we always tend to think of when we think about sheep being in a pasture. And as I said, there's parts of that area that are like that, but not all of it. Most of it is like this. It's very arid, very dry, it's kind of a desert climate. And so because of this, when you have this sheep and shepherd analogy that David is talking about in Psalm 23, he talks about leading us through the darkest valley. We need to understand that sometimes the valleys are necessary. Sometimes the valleys are needed to sustain life for the sheep. Because if you have this high ground and it's mostly arid, mostly dry desert, a lot of times the vegetation and the streams of water are down lower in this valley. And so if you're caring for sheep and you're trying to take care of sheep as a shepherd, you're going, part of your role is to provide for them, to give provision, to give them food and water. And so sometimes you have to intentionally lead the sheep down the cliff and go down to the valley area because that's where they find this vegetation, that's where they find this water. And so even when we're being led in the valley, we see that the shepherd is caring for us. And so the valley, yes, it's a place where you can find food, place where you can find water, but it's also a very dangerous place. Because sheep, when they're down low like that, and you have, you know, they can be easily seen. If you're a predator, if you're a different type of animal that eats sheep, and you're up on high, that, that makes sheep a very easy target. You can look at it and go, there they are, there's lunch. Right? So it's very easy to be exposed in that environment. You're down low and everything else is up high, they can see you. And so the shepherd has to provide overwatch. He has to make sure that the sheep are being cared for. So he's providing for you, but at the same time, he's also protecting you. And so the shepherd has all of these roles that he has to fulfill in order to take care of the sheep. And so there's provision, there's protection, there's guidance, there's comfort. All of these things in the role of a shepherd. So when we think about this idea and this analogy of valleys, as I mentioned, we all have peaks and valleys. We all have parts in our lives. Some of you have gone through those times where maybe you go to a mission trip, or you go to a church camp, or maybe it's just good conversation with other people from church, or you have good relationships, and you're all sitting together and having a good time of fellowship. Maybe that fills your cup a little bit. But you have those moments where you just feel like you're on a high for God. You're ready to you know, kick down walls for God. Let's go do this, and let's go do that. And you're just pumped up. You're fired up spiritually. And then we also have those moments in life where we're kind of in the valley. We're at those low points in life. And I don't know, but you, you might even be there this morning. You might have gone through something in this past week or this past month. And you can say, yep, I can identify. I'm in a valley right now. So we understand what this is like. This is how life is. We're going to have peaks and valleys. We talked about last week. We're going to suffer. We're going to go through these things. We all have these moments. But one of the things we need to realize about valleys is that this is where you really grow your trust. If you're a sheep, and you're in a valley, and you have to go through this dark place, and you're exposed, you're counting on, you're trusting that the guy up on the hill is going to take care of you, that the shepherd is watching over you, and he's going to protect you from any harm that might come your way. And so sometimes we have to go through these valleys in life because that's where our trust is formed. It's in the same way with our own lives. When you go through hardships, when you go through difficulties, this is where we, this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. We say, okay, this, this, I, this is hard, this is tough, but God, I trust you. I trust you to get me through this moment. So trust is formed in the valleys. We looked at Romans chapter 5 last week, and he says that we rejoice in our sufferings. We talked about how silly that sounds, to rejoice in our sufferings. And he says we have to go through these sufferings in order to develop perseverance and endurance. So another thing that happens is that in the valley is that our character built. Our endurance has a chance to be practiced and to be formed. And so we learn over time. We get a little bit more hardened to this. We get a little bit more where we can be more resilient, where we can, we've been through these things before. God's always brought us through. 
And so we have this perseverance, we have this endurance, this strength of character that Paul talks about that's being built up. If it was just always good times, if it was just always you know, these mountaintop moments with God, we truly wouldn't appreciate what we have in Christ. That He is our shepherd. That He's going to lead us, not just in the good times, but He's going to lead us through these dark valleys and these bad times. We, we learn to appreciate. We, we build this trust. We build this character by going through these things in life. So for us to make it through these valleys, we have to trust Him. We have to follow Him. He's going to lead us through. He's done it time and time again. He's got plenty of experience of leading people through valleys. He's got plenty of experience of being a shepherd to sheep. He can lead us through these things if we will trust Him. Of course, this analogy goes all the way through, as I said, to the Bible. And even all the way to the very last book. So in Revelation chapter 7, it's talking about this group of people that are saved. This group of saved in heaven. And so they're noticing these things and changing these things. And this is what is said about them. He who sits on the throne will give them, give the saved, shelter. They will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. For the Lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of life-giving water. Sounds a lot like Psalm 23. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. So even though all the way to the very end of the Bible, we still see this analogy. Jesus is our shepherd. And you notice the different phrases here. He gives you shelter. You'll never be hungry or thirsty. There's provision. You'll never be scorched by the heat of the sun. There's protection. He'll lead them to springs of life giving water. There's guidance. And He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There's comfort. All four of those things Coming back to this text, this is what Jesus, the shepherd, does for us. And we can trust. We can trust Jesus. Mm -hmm. We can trust the one who has suffered and who has died for us. In other words, we can live for the one who has died for us. We can put our trust in someone like Jesus. Because he says in John 10, not only am I the shepherd, I'm the shepherd who is willing to lay down his life. That's exactly what he does. He lays down his life for the benefit of just dumb sheep like us. He does it because he loves us. He does it because he wants us to have a relationship with him, for us to appreciate him, for us to trust him. That he's going to guide us. That he's going to shape us. That he's going to bring us through these, these valleys and these times. We can trust the one who has died for us. When we think about the sacrifice of Christ. And we think about him going to the cross. We think about him being buried. And him being raised. And this hope that we now have. That's what Paul says at the end of that passage of Romans 5. We go through all of these things. We go through the suffering. And the suffering leads to perseverance. And the perseverance leads to what? Hope. We have hope. That even at the end of the suffering, even at the end of the valley, Jesus, the shepherd, is there welcoming us. He's made all of this possible where we now have hope at the end of the valley, at the end of the suffering. So some application this morning. Obviously, follow the shepherd. Some of you are doing that. Some of you are not doing that so great. Some of you need to start that. We all need to follow the shepherd, follow Jesus. Along with that, don't try to go through these things, these valleys alone. Sometimes we try that, right? We say, I'm going to power through, I'm going to pull myself up on my bootstraps, we're going to bring it through this. And then what happens? We get lost. And for sheep, you know, you can, you can get lost in the valley. You can die of starvation because you can't find that food, that water. Or maybe a predator attacks you. We might think of this as the world attacking us. So there's a lot of hardships and difficulties that happen. And when we try to go through these things ourselves, folks, you don't have to. Not only do you have brothers and sisters in Christ in this room to help you get through those sufferings and help you get through those hard times, you have the shepherd himself who's saying, I will lead you through these valleys. I will get you through this. I will get you through to the other side if you will just trust and follow me. Don't do this alone. As long as you are following the shepherd, you will never be alone in good times or in bad. And so we need to trust that Jesus can protect, protect us, that He can provide for us, that He can lead us and guide us, and that He can 
comfort us. As I said, many of us are following Jesus, but some of us maybe are not, or maybe we're not following as closely as we should. And if we are honest, we can go back, we can all look back at our past lives, right, and say that at times we were kind of trying to do it on our own, and we were kind of off track. That's kind of what Peter says, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. He says, once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. So it doesn't matter how far off you've wandered. No, it doesn't matter what kind of trouble you kind of got yourself into by doing that. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been. Find Jesus. Find the shepherd. Get back on track. And even when those hard times come in life, you can get through those also. If you will stick by Him, if you will trust Him to lead you and to guide you, He can help you make it through those valleys. We should be following Him at all times. It's just really helpful when we're going through difficult times to know that we're not alone, that we have a shepherd to guide us. So good or bad, the object of the motive goal is the same. We follow Jesus. We follow the shepherd. And so I want to encourage you to do just that. Let's pray here. Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together and reflect on our relationship with you. We understand, Father, that many times when we're faced with difficulty and trials and hardships that we try to, to do things our own way. We try to get the resolve and the strength to power through these things, and we often leave the, the resources that we have behind. The fact that we have a, a church family that cares for us. The fact that we have you as our shepherd leading us and guiding us. Father, help us to, to not be so stubborn. Help us to not be so dumb that we think that we need to just do things ourselves. Father, you have provided your son. You have given us our shepherd. So give us the strength and the resolve the ability to focus on Him, to follow Him, that we will give up control, that we will give up living for self, that we will deny ourselves and allow Him to be in control, allow Him to guide us and lead us through life, whether it be good or bad. Father, help us to trust and to follow the shepherd. We thank you for Jesus. It's through His name that we pray this morning.